On today's episode of Star Wars Factions Compared, we take a look at carriers. Hey guys, this is Zach Hart Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another episode of Star Wars Factions Compared. Today we'll be looking at the carriers of the Rebel Alliance, Empire, Galactic Republic, and Confederacy of Independent Systems in order to determine which one is best. As always, best doesn't mean which carrier would win in a one-on-one -on -one fight, but rather which one operates most effectively within its role. Before we get into the list, I'd just like to say that if you guys want to hear me ramble on about starships a lot more, check out my second channel. I've been doing a playthrough of Star Wars Empire at War with the Thrawn's Revenge mod in. I think we have about five or six episodes out now, so check that out if you're interested. All right, so let's take a look at the four factions, and in this episode, I've taken the very best ship that realistically can be considered a carrier. A carrier's primary role is to transport starfighters into battle. Ironically, this puts factions like the Rebel Alliance at somewhat of a disadvantage. They have really high quality starfighters, so high quality that most of them have hyperdrives, and they bring them into battle on their own. On that note, the actual starfighter being brought to battle battle by the carriers won't be important here, we're just going to imagine that some random faction is trying to pick a ship to add to its fleet. Let's start first with the Empire and their Secutor class Star Destroyer. The Secutor has got a really interesting history, it first appeared in the Dark Empire comics as a background ship of the Bist defense fleet. The ship was imagined in greater detail by 3D artist Fractal Sponge. He later submitted this redesign to Lucasfilm, who canonized it in the Essential Guide to Warfare, not only the look of the ship, but also his design statistics. This is all pretty cool because despite the Secutor first entering lore in 1992, it acts as a bridge between the Venator class Star Destroyer used by the Galactic Republic and later Imperial Battlecruisers. But let's talk more about the Secutor itself from a fictional perspective. The ship is just over 2 kilometers long. However, despite the impressive length and width, the Secutor actually carries less fighters than its predecessor Venator. It is somewhat more geared towards a battleship role, with 15 heavy turbolaser batteries and various other weapons. We can see, for example, that it loses the dorsal hangar bay on the Venator, which is one of that ship's most important features. Still, it heavily outguns it, likely by almost an order of magnitude when talking about turbolasers and other offensive weapons. So, in the end, it comes down to preference. Let's move now to the other ship we've been discussing, the Venator class Star Destroyer. The Venator was one of the most common and important ships in the Republic's fleet. That honestly is a little strange given the fact that the Venator is a fairly specialized carrier, doesn't have very many turbolasers, and most of the space within the ship seems to be dedicated to transporting starfighters. The Venator can in fact carry over 400 fighters and is able to launch them fairly quickly through its dorsal hangar bay, although that does leave the ship somewhat open to damage. The ship is also fairly small and light, coming in at just around 1.2 kilometers, which I think gives it a good degree of flexibility and speed. The weakness of the ship is definitely its offensive potential. It has 52 laser cannons, which would be used for point defense, which I think is sufficient for a ship of that size. However, it only has 8 heavy dual turbo laser turrets, which I think is fairly light, especially when compared with modern Star Wars ships like Star Destroyers. I think that's okay though, the Venator should be used in a support role rather than as a frontline battleship. In my opinion, the Republic totally mismanaged their fleet by not having a frontline battleship. The Venator's main job should be to ferry and deploy starfighters into battle. After that, it should use its point defense cannons to screen and its turbo lasers to attack from afar. But you'd really want the Venator to survive the battle, you don't want it to be either the main target or the main source of damage for your fleet. Thankfully, the Venator was a sturdy ship, so it could take a beating, and it was also fairly useful for performing ground invasions or helping your fleet with logistics just due to the sheer amount of storage capacity that it had. I would have really liked to see a scaled up version of the ship, one maybe the size of the Secutor, that still maintained its specialization for carrying fighters. Alright, so let's now take a look at the Confederacy of Independent Systems and their Lucrahulk class battleship. The Lucrahulk has a fairly interesting in-universe history, one which was touched on in the Plagueis novel. The ship originally started off as a standard freighter, transporting large amounts of goods. However, sometime before the Battle of Naboo, the Trade Federation petitioned the Senate for the rights to militarize their ships, just adding a few weapons on in order to protect against pirates and other criminals. Once war was formally declared between the CIS and the Republic, many Lucrahulk underwent an additional refit, adding not only additional turbolasers, but also a very strong point defense 
system. You can see, for example, at the Battle of Naboo, the Trade Federation droid control ship that's blown up only really has quad turbo lasers as a means of defense, which are very ineffective against starfighters. A full Clone Wars era Lucra Hulk had over 600 laser cannons of various tonnage, along with around 100 turbo lasers and turbo laser batteries. So obviously a Lucra Hulk battleship was very well armed. However, it was also an exceptional carrier, which is unsurprising given its original role as a freighter. In its stock form, it could carry around 2,000 fighters into battle. However, along with that, it could also take several thousand transports, ground vehicles, and other support vehicles. If reorganized primarily for space combat, the Lucra Hulk could easily take thousands of fighters to battle. The ship is also very durable. It has not only a powerful shield, but almost impenetrable armor. Old Lucra Hulks were somewhat vulnerable to bombing runs because of their lack of point defense systems, but with the upgraded models, even that isn't really a viable option. They can only be taken down by concentrated turbo laser fire from large capital ships. The real downside to the Lucra Hulk is the fact that it's more of a space station than a true battleship. It's about one tenth as fast as, say, a Venator. However, I honestly think that's fine. The sheer size of the Lucra Hulk, instead of being a hindrance, I think allows its faction to use some interesting strategies. Carriers usually have to stay at the back of the fleet, which means starfighters have to be deployed behind capital ships. Due to the sheer durability of the Lucra Hulk and its decent weapons, it can actually be deployed near the front of a formation. It can soak up a lot of damage while also deploying fighters straight towards the enemy. The ship's many laser cannons could also be useful in helping to screen against enemy fighters while protecting other ships within the fleet. I honestly really like this ship. I don't think its speed is that much of a downside, and I think it does pretty much everything that a carrier needs to do. Finally, we have the Rebel Alliance. I went back and forth on which ship to pick for this faction. I could choose either the Quasar Fire Carrier, which is a clear carrier for the Alliance, although it would definitely be last on this list, or I could choose the Home One, which is the Rebel Alliance's best capital ship, but I think it's hard to say that it's a dedicated carrier. Still, given its role within the Battle of Yavin, I think it deserves a spot on this list. I'm going to keep it relatively short for the home one. It could bring about 100 to 150 starfighters into battle, likely more if fitted for smaller ships like TIE fighters or droid starfighters. The home one was actually fairly light on weaponry, with only 36 turbo laser cannons and no dedicated point defense system. However, the turbo lasers of the home one were so advanced they were actually able to effectively take down starfighters, so it had sort of a hybrid system that you don't often see. Besides for that, the the ship did have famous redundant shielding technology and a very thick hull, making it very difficult to destroy in battle. The only other thing worth mentioning, I think, is that the Home 1 had over 20 hangars, so it could send starfighters out fairly quickly as it had many different sources of activity. With that being said, let's rank these ships from worst carrier to very best. In my mind, there's a very clear divide between the Venator slash Lucra Hulk and the Secutor slash Home 1. I think it's clear that the latter two are worse when it comes to carriers, we'll talk about this later, but let's decide which one is the very worst. Honestly, despite the size difference, the Secutor and the Home 1 carry a comparable amount of fighters. I would also be willing to bet that just due to the sheer size of the Imperial ship, that it could be reorganized to bring even more ships into battle at the expense of some walkers or ground forces or just other space. Given then that they're more or less equal in that aspect, I think the only way to break the tie is to look at which one is more powerful and more useful generally. At first glance, it looks like the two ships have about an equal amount of firepower with 15 heavy turbo laser batteries and light turbo lasers on the Secutor. However, turbo laser batteries are actually a lot more deadly than just an individual turbo laser cannon. However, the ship doesn't appear to have a dedicated point defense system, which moves the advantage now over to the home one as its turbo lasers can be used to track and destroy starfighters. For that reason, along with the advanced Mon Calamari shielding and sensor array on the Home 1, I think that the Secutor has to be last and the Home 1 has to be third. At number two, we have the Venator. I think that this ship is better than the previous two just because of the focus that it puts on bringing starfighters into battle. Remember, we're not looking at the better ship overall, but the one that operates most effectively in the carrier role. The Venator not only has a large complement, but also the unique dorsal launching system System, which allows starfighters to enter battle fairly quickly. Sure, it doesn't have the best weapons, it's fairly lightly armed, but it can screen against starfighters and provide some support. At number one, we have the Lucra Hulk class battleship. 
This is basically everything that I want in a carrier. It's extremely hard to destroy, it has a very impressive point defense system with hundreds of laser cannons, and it can carry over 2,000 fighters. It also has offensive potential with its long range turbo lasers. You can station it at the front of a fleet, at the back of the fleet. Really, the Lucre Hawk gives you a lot of tactical options. It carries a boatload of starfighters, and in my mind, it is the best carrier of the four discussed today. However, that's just my opinion. Let me know what you think up in the upper right hand corner and also down in the comment section. Don't forget to leave me any ideas you guys have for future videos and of course if you like this give it a like, subscribe, turn notifications on and hey keep watching. Thanks again guys as always this has been Eckhart's Ladder. May the force be with you.